right. Awesome. We are L I B E Facebook Live. I am Tamara Johnson Sheely. I am the Senior Advocate of Politics, Beauty and Barber. I am the President of the Concern Beauty and Barber Professionals. And today we have with us Ms. Alex Scranton of Women's Voices for the Earth, a national organization that is doing phenomenal work. And I invited her on because health and safety is our primary concern and it's their primary concern too. So good morning, Alex. How good are morning, you? Good morning, Tamara. Thanks so much for having me on. Fantastic. Yes. Welcome to the Facebook Live world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, tell us who you are, your title, and what you do over at Women's Voices for the Earth. Sure. So I'm Alex Scranton. I'm the Director of Science and Research at Women's Voices for the Earth. Um, and our mission is to amplify women's voices to eliminate the toxic, uh, toxic chemicals that harm our health and our community. Um, so what we do, we were founded in um, Missoula, Montana in 1995, and we, we came together as an organization um, to really bring women's voices into the environmental movement, and particularly to focus on toxic chemicals that affect our health. These are environmental issues that women really care about, because we care about our families, we care about our health, and we know that there are chemicals out there that are really affecting, affecting our health. So we work on a whole... Um, range of, of issues, but what's relevant today is, the, is our work on both beauty products and particularly salon products. Um, <clears throat> and you're very concerned about the health of salon workers due to the chemicals that they're exposed to in their jobs every day. Yeah. They hear us talking about it all the time. They hear us as an organization, we, we rally, we've been talking about health and safety, health and safety, health, safety, sanitation. Those are our three big words, health, yeah. safety, sanitation, health, safety, sanitation. We say all the time. And I think sometimes professionals just don't really understand the magnitude of what they're doing and to the extent of harm that they can call that they're not only causing to themselves, but to the clients they serve. That's right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, our, our um, understanding from our you know investigations into the into the issue, the laws that we have are not protecting your health as salon workers. They are absolutely failing salon workers. Um, in terms of protecting your health, they are allowing very dangerous chemicals in the products you use every day. Um, mm -hmm. And I think salon workers, particularly, you know, you're working, you're using the products that work. You do amazing, incredible work to make people beautiful. Um, but the products that you're given to work with are really much too harmful for your health, and you're paying for that with your with, with your health along along the lines. Um, yes. So we really think what we need is we need salon workers talking about the products that they want. They want healthier products that work really well, that are gonna get the effects that they want, but that aren't harming their health, that aren't making it hard to breathe, that aren't ripping up the skin on their hands, um, that aren't potentially increasing their risk of cancer down the line or affecting their ability to have a child. Um, these are the things that you, you should absolutely be, be demanding. It is the, the manufacturer's responsibility to provide you with safe products. And right now, I think they're taking the easy way out they're, you know, they're making products that work, but using chemicals that are much too dangerous. Um, and that's what needs to change over time. In our industry, we don't, you know, we, we just know we make people look good. You know, we're misting and we're spraying and we're, we're, we're pressing and all these toxicities are in the air. And then the combination of what we're being exposed to magnified, the, magnified by the longevity of our day. Like we have these long days. Sometimes we spend... 12 hours in salons and barbershops all day being exposed and overexposed to chemicals. We don't really understand. I don't think they really understand. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I, I may have told you the story that one time I walked into a uh, hair salon mm -hmm. talking about our efforts, and it was a literally a gray cloud in the room. Wow. Feed the air in your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, this cannot be healthy. That's right. That's right. I mean, that, you know, and that's an extreme situation, but that's a definite sign. And I think all salon workers have had this experience. You know, they know that there are certain products that give them a headache. They know there's certain products that give them, you know, red hands or a rash, these kind of little symptoms, but they deal with it. Stop dealing with it. You know, like this is something that, you know, take these symptoms seriously. You know, mm -hmm. you should not give you, use a product that gives you a headache. Demand a safer product that doesn't give you a headache that still works. That's, you know, and you know, this is America. 
know, we can make really safe products. We're really innovative. We need to demand the safer products because the, these little things, you're like, oh, it's just a headache today. You know, down the line, salon workers have higher rates of Alzheimer's. They have higher rates of, of dementia. There's these neurological effects that happen from many, many headaches over time and exposure to, to things that are affecting your brain every day. Um, so you don't want that to happen down the line. You want safer products now. And it's not hard. UT and Barber professionals, we are paying these people. Let's think about this, professionals. We are paying these people to kill us. <laughs> like, so what we're asking for is not a hard ask. Like she just said, we are, this, this is America. We're innovative. We are, we know what's safe. We know, you know, we, we can take corn and we can take all these other natural products create greater byproducts like we we can do this right we can do this absolutely absolutely and like i said that you know the, the manufacturers have taken the easy way out because they're you know they've been making products that work you know they give you the hairspray with the super hold you know they give you the the hair color that's got just the right color and it stays a long time like they figured out that part but they're not looking at the other side what what is that doing to your health Right. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's something you really need to be um, uh, having them look at. It's really their, their, you know, it's their job to provide you with safe products. You're the customer. You're buying the products to use on your clients. You're, the customer's always right. You need to have safer products. It's really yes, we have comments. Look, we have people that are chiming in. So beauty and barber mm -hmm. professionals, chime in. Let's have a conversation with Alex. Women's Voices for the Earth, they've been around for a very long time. They do phenomenal work. We've aligned ourselves with them because we want every bit of information that we can squeeze out of them because we have to educate our industry on better practices and health and safety, making sure that we we stay safe behind the chair providing these services and then we keep our clients safe. That is not a hard ask. That is not a hard ask. So we're 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 getting some um some some people to actually chime in and, and talk about it. She he says, well, the stores and manufacturers don't care who they sell to. Yep, they don't care. They they sell to they not only just selling to us as professionals, they're selling to consumers. There's a lot of products on the consumer market, right, Alex, that aren't even safe. That's right. That's right. I think there's an impression if it's on the shelf in a store, well, someone must have looked at it. They must have made sure it's safe. Unfortunately, the laws are not that protective. You can put a lot of things on the shelf that should not be there and that are going to be dangerous. You know, yeah. um, there are a lot of products that are, you know, they are made for professionals because you're trained. You know how to use them. You've been given, you know, sometimes specific instructions on how to use them safely. But people are using them at home and they don't have that training. Right. So they can you can harm yourself. It, there are there are products you really need in a very well ventilated room because there are fumes that can overcome you. You shan't, shouldn't be doing this in, you know, a small unventilated bathroom, which is where these things are happening at home. Right. We need safer products that you can use in your unventilated bathroom because there are no fumes. That's what we need to be to be looking for and demanding. And it's something that we can have. Um, one of the things that we did um, as Women's Voices for the Earth, you can go um, to our website. We have a report called Beauty and its Beast. This report looks through the medical literature and said, well, what are what is harming salon workers? What do we know about studies of people in different jobs? And you routinely see hairdressers, salon workers, nail salon workers coming to the top saying, yeah, they have higher risks of certain kinds of cancer. They have higher risks of asthma. They have higher risks of dermatitis. They have higher risks of depression even, which can be a neurological impact. So mm -hmm. there are some very real effects that we're seeing in the literature um, that are real warning signs. You know, that we don't know why these things are happening. There, there's not enough science to say, okay, the people who use this product are the ones who are getting cancer. But we know, I mean, all of the research are saying, we're pretty sure this has to do with the chemicals they're being exposed to and that combination of chemicals that we're being exposed to. So we really need both right now, salon workers need to be careful about what they're exposing themselves to, what products they use and what kind of conditions they use, whether they're using gloves, whether they've got good ventilation, but you also have to be saying, we need safer products. And you know, it may take a little while to get those developed, but this is you know, a great opportunity to manu for manufacturers to distinguish themselves. They come off the hairspray that's got good hold and it's not going to give you asthma. That's the one that people are going to buy, right? So there's a real advantage there for, for manufacturers to, to jump on this train as well and get safer products. Yeah. There's a, another comment. Um, I'll show it. I'll put it on the screen. She says, name some of the products that cause the illness you, illnesses that you need. 
Sure. You know, you know that Brazilian bro- blowout, don't we? Well, Brazilian blowout's a really good example, yes. The keratin hair straighteners are one of the ones that have gotten a lot of press um, because they do emit formaldehyde. I mean, that's part of how they work. There's formaldehyde in the product. Brazilian blowout particularly was like 10% formaldehyde, which is just off the charts. And when you heat it, which you have to do, you got to put it with the, with the flat iron. When you heat it, that gas formaldehyde is coming off and you're breathing it in, your client's breathing it in. Um, it can lead to all kinds of effects, including higher risks of cancer down the line. Um, so that, that is one particular problem. Um, there are some other, um, there aren't a lot of other studies linking specific products, but certainly um, hair bleaches have been um, indicated. Um, there are um, permanent wave solutions have been, have been linked to some problems like asthma, um, acrylic nail products um, have, have caused some problems, and then fragrance in general. There's fragrance in all kinds of salon products. And that's leading to um, to some of the symptoms as well. So um, those are some of the ones that we know about. Certainly there are more. If there's a product you know that really bothers you, tell the FDA. Like, it's a really good idea to get those on some list. Tell us. We'd be happy to know at Women's Voices of the Earth what the products are you, you are most worried about. Um, because those are ones we can then do more investigation into and take a look at some of the chemicals that, that, are being, that you're being exposed to. Yeah, we have another comment. Um, he says, I'll show this one up on the screen. It says, product companies have sold out, <laughs> sold, sold out to uneducated consumers. And you know what? They may have sold to uneducated consumers, but they're, they're selling to educated professionals too. So we're not as educated as we think we are. And let's go back to where licensing even started. Well, manufacturers knew that they were creating problems that were a detriment to the consumer if used incorrectly. So this is where the whole licensing came from, where they understood they needed to train these professionals to provide these services. It's a transfer of liability. Let's talk about really the root of all of this. Mm-hmm. They want to transfer the liability from the from the manufacturer over to the professional. So if you mess up, it's your fault, professional, because they've given you specific instructions, quote unquote, that on how to use these pro- how to use these products to provide these services. So it's a transfer of liability. So educated professionals are getting it wrong too. <laughs> so it's not just the uneducated consumers. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. And I think both consumers and professionals can be asking for safer products because that's what that's just simply what you deserve, right? Yes. And yes. You, know, you ask for it, you're going to get it because the customer's always right. They want to sell the product. If you won't buy the toxic product, they're not going to sell it anymore, right? So it's really a matter of Getting, getting your voices together, really thinking about the products you're using and what effects they're having on your health. Even if it's just that initial, like, oh, this one kind of makes me cough. This one kind of gives, gives me a headache. These are signs that there's something in there that is doing much more damage long-term to your health. Especially when you're a salon worker, like you said, you're doing 12 hour days, you're doing this for a lifetime. You know, Some of these products, are, the companies that are making them are like, well, you use it every other week, you know, for 10 minutes, it's not gonna harm your health. As a salon worker, you're using it all day long, you know, potentially 12 hours, you know, seven days a week. I mean, this is really, you know, this is, these are some real exposures that can harm your health. Yeah. And we've, in 2018, this is why this conversation this morning was so important. We've been um, working with um, Alex and, and Women's Voices for the Earth. We've been following them. They've been following us and we've been collaborating as best we could to spread the word to professionals about, you know, professional safety, about consumer safety. And our industry, we have to be ahead of the curve. Like we can't wait to learn. We have to learn now and we need to keep learning. So continual education is pivotal. And that's why we started the Concerned Beauty Professionals because we are really concerned about our health and safety. We are even, we're concerned about the health and safety of the clients that we serve. So we have to be diligent, diligent and intentional about getting continuing education and learning from this science and learning from this research and aligning ourselves with people that are doing this, the, the hard work so that we can make sure that we're doing what they're, they're asking us to do and keeping all of us safe. Like this is a, this is a total partnership. And I mean, mm-hmm. beauty of our professionals, we have to get this right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, my, my voice is working for women's voices with the earth. You know, it's one perspective, but I can't sway the manufacturers because they're like, you're not buying all my products. I know that, you know, your stylist is, and I just have mm-hmm. to convince your stylist, you know? And that's why I, I agree that our, our partnership is so important. Like 
listen to Tomorrow. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> Please, I have been for six years. <laughs> That's right. Exactly, exactly. You know, and you're a real incredible force. I mean, one of the things that we've done at Women's Voices for the Earth over the years, we uh, work. Um, the former group called the um, Professional Health and Beauty um, Salon Alliance. Now, this alliance is it's different nonprofits around the country who care about salon workers. There's some researchers involved who are working on, on some of this research. And what we've done is we've taken groups of salon workers to Washington, D.C. to tell their stories to their representatives, to tell their stories to the FDA, to tell their stories to the EPA, and tell them what it's really like on the ground and what, what their health what their health, how their health is being affected. Incredibly, incredibly powerful testimony when they hear, and you know, I can tell someone else's story. It's not nearly as powerful when it's coming from your voice saying, this is what I do every day. I love my job. I want to be able to do it till I'm 80, right? I, you know, I don't want to have my, my, my health cut short my, my working years, right? Um, and that's really, really powerful when it comes from you guys. So can't thank tomorrow enough to be able to, you know, working with all of you um, you know, to, to bring those voices out because they're so important in making it, making the impact and changing our laws and changing what manufacturers will do. Yeah. And this, this is, this is like a threefold. So let's, let me, let me kind of bring the industry up to speed, Alex, because I want to encourage them to be a part of what we're doing because but, but for, for one big reason is that, like I said, it's about the health and safety of our, us as professionals and it's the health and safety of the clients that we serve. Why not be a part of what we're doing? We have Industry Day where here in the in Atlanta every um, the first Monday and Tuesday in February every year we're going. This is our fifth year doing it where we're literally trying to get our industry engaged in the political process so that we can have a voice when it comes to policy that affects our industry. Like we are the ones that have to demand this from our legislators and put this thing into action state to state. So we have a, an industry day that's coming up the first Monday and Tuesday in February, February 5th and 6th. Be on the lookout for that. Be a part of what we're doing. We also have an 844 number that we are implementing for. I'm not sure if I told you this, Alex. But we have an 844 number that we're implementing in 2018. It's 844-4-SAFE-BB, which stands for Beauty and Barber. So again, that number is 844-4-SAFE-BB. BB for beauty and barber. So our ultimate objective with this phone number is to start collecting those stories that Alex is talking about so that we can not only hold our industry accountable, we're going to hold these manufacturers accountable. So we're asking our customers if you've ever been injured or had any adverse health effects or any kind of reactions in our nail salons, our hair salons, skincare salons or barbershops, call us. Again, 844-4-SAFE-BB. If you are a beauty and barber professional and you've been injured or had any adverse health effects or, or any kind of health reactions from products and or providing a service, call us. Again, 844-4-SAFE-BB. Easy number. Because we're going to, like I said, we're going to hold our profession accountable. We're going to hold our professionals accountable. We're going to have some accountability to what's happening. We're, we're not enforcing anything, but we're definitely going to have these stories to tell, these stories to share. And why not beauty and barber professionals join and be a part of what we're doing? Alex, we would love to go to DC with you as an organization. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. We would love to be next to another group. group. <laughs> we want you to come. Absolutely. We would love to be another group that is a part of what you guys are doing nationally. This is where we align ourselves, folks. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We align ourselves with great organizations like Women's Voices, Voices for the Earth. And we, we make this thing happen together. Yeah, absolutely. I, t I totally agree. I totally agree. You know? So tell us when, when, when you guys are going to D.C. and is it 2018? We, we will. We don't have the next one planned. We did, we did it in, uh, I guess, a year or two ago. So we'll, we'll let you know when we plan the next one. Absolutely. Yes. The All next right. one, Beauty and Barber Professionals, if you are a part of what we're doing and we're, we're and you're serious, join us. Be a part of this because we need to go to D.C. with them. That's we right. need to be a part. We need to be boots on the ground. So not only do they have these consumer voices, they also have professional voices there as well. Great. Fantastic. You got another little army coming with you. Boots on the ground. Right. <laughs> you know, the other place where we use um, uh, salon uh, worker voices where, where it's really helpful to have you is, you know, every now and then we get, we get in touch or, or, you know, we're sort of soliciting the media. I mean, the media, newspapers, blogs, magazines, 
really, really important for influencing these manufacturers because they don't want bad press, but mm -hmm. they need, but reporters really love to talk to salon workers and hear what their stories are, hear how they've been affected, and that can really move things too. So we will be in touch with you tomorrow. And, you yes. know, when we need some voices, talk to her. If you, you know, we do, we do trainings for um, media trainings. How do you talk to a reporter? How do you tell your story? Um, you know, and, and we're happy to, you know, put those, put those people in touch when reporters want to talk to salon workers because those are important stories to get out there. How about we're going to put you on our schedule for 2018 to do some sort of media training? I think that would be yeah. awesome to get our industry prepared to yeah. actually deliver the message and be prepared, not just get prepared when you need to be prepared. How about get, get prepared and stay prepared? Exactly. Yeah, we'd be happy to do that. Sure. Yes, we'll, I'll definitely reach out to you in that regard. See, beauty and barber professionals, there is so many resources available to us as an industry. I see someone posted on here. I'm going to show this comment that we need a union in the oh. beauty and barber industry. Because we are licensed beauty professionals, we have to be organized. It's the difference between being unionized and organized. We need to be organized because we are an, or, we are an industry of, of beauty and barber professionals who are licensed, and we need to be organized, which is basically the same thing. You operate as a unit, as a as as if you were a union, but we are an organization. We have the legislation piece, the, the part where we address this and we put we make things happen. And then we have the education component. We are all that we need to network, take our industry to the next level. We need to start marketing and letting people know that the people in our organization, that's something that we're going to work on real soon. The people in our organization, these are the ones you need to spend your money with. So, because they're educated, they're motivated, and they're going to keep you healthy, and they're going to keep you safe in their chairs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, slumber, you guys are fierce. I mean, you know, I mean, you know how to relate to people. You know how to talk to people. You have real stories. You have real passion for your work. I mean, you're, you're unstoppable when you get organized. It's just, it's, you know, so we, we, mm -hmm. we, we, want, we want to help, and we want to, you know, create those opportunities to get your voices out there, because that's what's going to make a difference. Yeah. And we have real power. Real power. Absolutely. Real power. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just want to thank you, Alex, for joining us and all the great work you guys do at Women's Voices for the Earth. I am glad that our organization is collaborating in whatever regard we can to, to make sure that you guys, you know, have everything you need from us as professionals. If you haven't joined us, Beauty and Barber Professionals, go to our website. It's T-H-E for the, C for concern, B for beauty, B for barber, P for Professional. So again, the CBBP.org. Alex, your website? It's uh, www.womensvoices.org for Women's Voices for the Earth. Awesome. I thank you, Alex. And she will be joining us on our Monday school conference call. I don't have the date. Do you remember the date, Alex? Uh, February 12th, I think. February the 12th, she will be joining us on a Monday school conference call. She or one of her colleagues, whoever. But we, all, we always know we get great information from Women's Voices for the Earth. So they'll be joining us on a conference call. That's a part of our organization. That's our Monday school we do every second and fourth Monday. Where you can get some valuable information that helps you move and be, you are a professional. So we have to learn on a whole nother level. The, the information is there, the science is there, the research is there, the data is there, and we have great organizations that we can align ourselves with to deliver. So we, they deliver and we deliver and we all win. Great. Well, thanks so much, man. This is fantastic. Such fun. Thank you, Alex. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.